Hey guys, Pooh down here. With Halloween just around the corner, I thought it would be cool to make some sort of video to celebrate the occasion. Halloween, as you know, is celebrated every year on the 31st of October. But if you haven't noticed yet, it's not Halloween. Well, although I love Halloween, I prefer not to mess up my upload schedule, so I guess you guys get this video early. To celebrate Halloween this year, I thought it would be cool to talk about some of my favourite ghost Pokemon. Remember that this is just my opinion, so if you want to, you can go ahead and leave yours down in the comments. Also, in the iCard there will be a poll where you guys can help me decide what Pokemon type to discuss next time. You should have a choice of either water, fire or grass. Can we maybe get 50 likes on this video? It'd be greatly appreciated. But anyway, let's begin. Just making this list and at number 5 is new Pokemon, Polisand. Since it was officially revealed, I've been forgetting its name a few times, but the reason behind that may be because Gen 7 has released so many amazing new Pokemon. But hopefully, when I get the chance to use Polisand on my team, it'll be a bit more memorable to me. So why do I like Polisand? It is a ghost sandcastle. Why do I find this thing so cool? Well, maybe it's because of Polisand's bio, which describes it as a Pokemon which creates sandy vortexes to capture small Pokemon, aka its prey, and then absorb that Pokemon's life force. It's such a badass Pokemon to me, and I really want it on my Pokemon Sun and Moon team. Also, when I was younger, I used to live close to a beach, and every so often, I used to go there with my family and have a picnic and build sandcastles. I used to love going to the beach, and since Polisand is a sandcastle, it definitely reminds me of those sandy beaches I used to enjoy visiting. But like I said, this Pokemon enjoys draining other Pokemon's life force, so be careful on the sunny shores in Alola, because if you find yourself in trouble with a Polisand, you're probably screwed. Life's a beach. Coming in at number 4 on this list is the OG ghost Pokemon, it's Gengar. Whenever I think of Kanto, Gengar is one of the first Pokemon I think of because it's an iconic Pokemon. The thing is with Gengar, its design isn't over the top, it's pretty simple and that's what I like about it. Also, it has a unique typing of Ghost and Poison, which is a typing that's only shared with its pre-evolutions Ghastly and Haunter. Also, Gengar is a pretty useful Pokemon to use in battle. With 130 base special attack, Gengar can certainly give a hit. And also, it learns a variety of moves, so it can definitely deal with a wide range of Pokemon. In Pokemon X and Y, Mega Evolution was revealed, and Gengar was one of these Pokemon that could now evolve even further with the power of Mega Evolution. Mega Gengar's design is just so damn beastly, and its shiny form really suits it. And like I said with Gengar being good in battle, Mega Gengar is even better. As well as small boosts in its speed, defense, and special defense, Mega Gengar gets quite the boost in special attack. I said before the Gengar could give a hit, but Mega Gengar? It can destroy teams. Gengar is just an amazing Pokemon, and it would feel wrong to not include the OG and most iconic ghost Pokemon on this list. In at number 3 on this list is Chandelure. Now there are quite a few ghost type Pokemon that come in the form of inanimate objects, but for me, one of my favourites has to be Chandelure. With the unique typing of Ghost and Fire, which is only shared by its evolution line and the newly revealed Alolan Marowak, Chandelure is one of my favourite ghost types. Not only does Chandelure have a cool design, but it's also pretty useful to use in battle. With high stats and special attack, it can certainly give a hit, but as for taking one, it can't cope with too well. Also, Chandelure has a lot of resistances, being poison, bug, steel, fire, grass, ice, and fairy as well as being immune to normal and fighting types. Also, if it has flash fire as its ability, it'll be immune to fire type attacks too. With battling aside though, I have other attachments to this Pokemon. In one of my earlier playthroughs of Pokemon Black and White, I chose Oshawott as my starter. So for the fire type on my team, I chose to use a Litwick. The only problem I faced with having this Pokemon on my team was not knowing how to get it to evolve into a Chandelure. I didn't know that in order for you to get a Chandelure, you would need to give Lampen the Dusk Stone. For some reason, in my personal experience with Pokemon Black and White, I had no idea where to find the Dusk Stone. So for a while, I was stuck with a Lampent on my team. Although I did eventually get a Chandelure, the process of getting one was pretty difficult. But don't get me wrong, I would go for it again and again, because Chandelure is a cool Pokemon. Hey, 
Coming in at number 2 on this list is possibly the cutest ghost Pokemon there is, and it's Mimikyu. Like Paul Sand, who I previously mentioned on this list, Mimikyu is a new ghost Pokemon for Pokemon Sun and Moon. When it was revealed to the world, almost everyone fell in love with it. Whenever I would go on Twitter, I would see fan pictures of Mimikyu dressed as other Pokemon rather than Pikachu. But the story behind Mimikyu is actually pretty sad. Mimikyu is a lonely Pokemon who always wants to make friends, but anyone who would see it in its true form would come down with a mysterious illness. Because of this, Mimikyu dresses up as Pikachu. And another reason it dresses up as Pikachu is because Pikachu is a popular Pokemon. And like I said, Mimikyu only wants to make friends. With a typing of Ghost and Fairy, Mimikyu is also a pretty unique Pokemon. At first, I really didn't see what people saw in Mimikyu, but it has really grown on me. Mimikyu is a very cool Pokemon, but it wasn't good enough to make number one. So let's see what ghost type Pokemon did. And the Pokemon at the number one spot on this list and my favorite ghost Pokemon is Giratina. For anyone who saw my top 10 favorite Pokemon list, you probably could have guessed this. The first Pokemon game I ever played was Pokemon Platinum. So as you could guess, I have a personal connection with Giratina. It was my first ever legendary Pokemon, and when I added it to my team for the rest of my journey in the Sinnoh region, it could easily take out most Pokemon. Sadly though, I haven't used Giratina much since my time in Sinnoh, so I really do hope Sinnoh Remix come out soon, because I would love to capture Giratina once again and use it on my team. Also, Giratina is a pretty unique Pokemon, not only because of its unique typing of Ghost and Dragon, but because of where you find it in the games. Obviously, I'm not talking about too in that cave. I'm talking about the distortion world. The distortion world is a really strange place, but I think it's just so cool. It does have some challenging puzzles, but completing the puzzles is worth it because at the end, you'll be rewarded with the opportunity of capturing a Giratina. But anyway, that's it for this list. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. Also, be sure to vote for which type you want me to talk about next week. You can do that in the iCard. Also guys, be careful if you're going out trick or treating this Halloween. Maybe go with your friends or an adult, but I really do hope you enjoy yourselves. But anyway, that's it for now, so I've been Pogdan, you've been amazing, and I'll see you guys next time.